see you there. <laughs> I don't know why I've always wanted to say that, but I just, I always have. So I finally got my chance. All right, really quickly, uh, we are just about to put our wheat beer, our rye wheat beer into secondary for, you know, like a week or whatever the case is. And it's going to be the first time that we're actually doing this with the SS Brutech Glyco Chiller. In the past, before we got the, the Glyco Chiller, we had major issues of not being able to cold crash without a fridge. So, stay tuned. See what happens. Before we take a look into this um, dumping of the trube and everything and the yeast, I just want to show you guys real quickly, if you if you have problems where you need, you know, things leak and things like that throughout your brew day, whatever the case is, uh, you can just get yourself one of these pads. Go to an automotive store or something like that of that nature, and they're used to soak up oil. They're relatively well for soaking up water, not amazing, but it does capture, it does capture things, right? More on that later on when we show you a couple other hacks where you could use this if you're using this glyco chiller, right? So let's get back to what we're doing, all right? All right, so real quickly, I do have a connection for that, um, but it's really no need for it at the moment. So I love these buckets. These buckets fit directly underneath. I have my racking cane with a ball valve on it and it's closed. That's just how I tend to do it sometimes. You don't have to do it that way, but that's just how I do it. Closed, closed, slowly open, guys. Let's see what we got going on here. Nice and slowly. Nice and slowly, there we go. I don't want to disturb it all that much. All right, so it's at this point where you kind of got to be a little careful when you're doing it with this. If you don't have a conical, hopefully you can see it. We're going to try and just get it so we can start to see a little bit of beer. We don't want to lose all that much, but it will squirt at you. I don't know if you can see that or not. There we go. See, it starts to squirt. As long as you got your bucket in position like this, you're fine. You're not going to make a mess. Just don't crank it like a maniac. You gotta keep in mind that this thing is still on the CO2. Because I um, when you close, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. This this there's carbon dioxide in the in this fermenter right now because what I like to do is once the fermentation is complete, I'll I will close the I will close the ball valve on the racking cane. Because I, I think it work I think it's better that way than the than the blow off tube. There's actually there's actually times that I actually ferment really low alcohol beer under pressure also. There's still a fair amount of trube in there. All right, so that's all beer right there for the most part. I'm happy with that. I closed the main valve to the bottom of the conical and what I'm going to do is I'm, you know I'm going to release that you, sometimes I, I will keep that there and I'll cover it with tin foil and then just let the true drop down like that which is probably going to be the case but I'll make that decision once I'm done cleaning all this stuff up all right so what I'm going to do now is just take all this off and show you try to show you uh how much of the true is in here so far without making a mess. That's a fair amount. That's definitely definitely a, a good amount of true. Um, whether or not I got 
more out of it by cold crashing at 45 degrees with the glycol? I would have to say yes. Honestly, I think I think I think so. But you know, we'll see on the second one. We'll see on the secondary how much comes out. So I'm gonna probably I'm gonna wind up crashing this thing to um, to about 40, give or take. Probably I'm gonna drop it down another five degrees. All right. So like I said, you know, sometimes I'll wrap tin foil around the sight glass and I'll just I'll just let it do it that way and I'll let it drop down. I don't think I'm gonna do it like that this time because I was just thinking about something. Not that I'm overly concerned with losing beer and stuff like that, but that looks relatively clear for a wheat and, well, wheat and rye beer. So I'm just gonna take whatever beer is left inside the elbow and the sight glass, probably put it into a pint or something and just drink it at 45 degrees. It's actually got a little bit of carbonation in it anyway from from the um, from closing the the, uh, the ball valve on the on the racking cane. So I will enjoy whatever that tastes like. And this beer is very low alcohol. This one only came out to about four percent. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do a little cleaning and spraying, and then we'll let it rock for a little while, and then we'll come back to it. We'll see what we got. All right. More likely, I'll be honest with you, it's so clear. I'm so clear looking right now that. I'll more than likely just just keg it right from there, from whatever secondary, because the rocket cane's in a good position anyway, so. But before I get offhand, I just wanna, you know, hopefully, hopefully you got something out of this video. I know I, I, I love to ramble because I'm really passionate about this shit. There's a few things though, if you do get the glyco chiller, like I said, that I'm gonna get into in another video about a couple hacks on this if you get if you're in the market for for a glyco chiller or if you're going to make your own or whatever the case is they're really cool so far this has worked out a lot i mean i showed you all this all the trub out there and this is it's pretty solid not for nothing it's actually pretty solid compared to the way it was when you tried to do it at 60 degrees and uh, 70 degrees for that matter and everything's controlled i didn't really have to you know have to mess with anything so that's great um but yeah, there are a few things that I have to deal with, like condensation is like a big issue that I'm uh, dealing with right now, and I'm gonna go into that in a different, in a later video because I, I came up with one or two hacks so far, but I think that I want to I want to make it worth more your while. All right, you know, I get patience. Patience is a good thing. All right, so you know, in the meantime, you know, you know the deal. Respect beer and respect yourself. All right, guys. See you later. I gotta I gotta clean all this shit up. So. You guys just uh, go crack one open. Later. Yeah, so about drinking that pint from that. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. I think we're just gonna I think we're just gonna go to the sample valve. Yeah. We gotta we gotta test the gravity anyway. I mean I know basically where it is right now, but you know, whatever. I'm very curious to to see how that goes, because I did make this attempt. That didn't turn out too well. <laughs> Peace.